Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team and the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. Well, if you've watched this show for any length of time, you know I love to put a spotlight on people doing good in the community, and I especially like it when it's being done by young people. So to join us to talk about that right now, Catherine and Isabel Adams, you have a wonderful nonprofit. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having us. Okay, so the show is called, pa or the, the mm -hmm. nonprofit is paperforwater.org. All right, uh, why don't we start with you, Isabel. What, uh, what's it about? So we use origami to raise money to fund water projects around the world. And so we have hundreds of volunteers who help us fold. And we have an online store and we go to gift markets around the DFW area to raise money for water projects. And you guys are very close as sisters. <laughs> Whose idea was it? Was it a joint idea or do you remember who came up with it first? Well, we always say it's a joint idea. Um, it was. It, it more was. or less. More or less. But, I mean, I was the first one to start folding origami, so I mm -hmm. do have to take a little bit of credit there. But, yes. I mean, turning it into an organization it was, was definitely a joint definitely effort. A joint idea. It was technically our third project because we'd done <laughs> two other like one week projects with our dad and that's what this was supposed to be <laughs> yes. and then it kind of grew out of control a little bit and how old were you when you started it five and eight no kidding yep yes that's so awesome and the media has uh really uh grabbed onto this story we've got a clip from cbs 11 let's roll that right now But as Isabella and Catherine Adams folded paper into art, what unfolded was an opportunity to help others. Photojournalist Mike Kinney shares the story of paper for water. Let's line it up. There you go. Origami is the Japanese art of paper folding. It's just something that everybody can do. It's fine. You're going to fold it over like that. You don't have to be super gifted or skilled at it, and you can still make something extremely beautiful out of a simple sheet of paper. Uh, everyone's looking like a mustache here. Today, we're at North Park Presbyterian Church, and it's a paper for water volunteering event. We have them once a month. From here, you're just gonna fold this down, and then this one goes that way. My sister and I actually started paper for water when we were five and eight years old. And we started it because we learned that girls our age often don't get to go to school because they're sick from dirty water or because they spend their entire day hauling water. So we decided that we wanted to do something about that. And we used something that we love doing, which is origami, to make a difference in other people's lives. Oh my gosh, look how much we have. What we actually do is modular origami. And so instead of one piece of paper, each ornament takes usually about 30 sheets of paper. Today we're making Basetta stars. So this is a finished star, and it's 30 sheets of paper. Um, by yourself, it takes an hour. But as a group, it took us about 10 minutes. Exactly getting over the past seven years, we've raised over $1.6 million and helped to fund over 190 water projects. And we estimate that we have positively impacted 60 to 70,000 people who now have access to clean water. It's amazing, and um, it just keeps getting better every year. It's blossomed and grown far beyond our wildest imaginations, and it's just, it's helped so many people. It is, I think, one of the most amazing feelings ever to know that you're really, truly changing people's lives. Well, they're amazing young girls who have a heart. Well, if you'd like to learn how you can volunteer to help or make a donation, we have posted a link on our website at cbsdfw.com. You know, it's hard to believe that in 2019, this is still such a need in the world, but, but great is. to see that young girls like this are doing their part to help, isn't it? Great accomplishment. Yeah, that's going to do it for us. At four
That is so cool. I wish you guys could hear what they were saying behind the scenes. <laughs> we were so young back then. Right? <laughs> well, no, we were debating on when it was because we couldn't quite remember what that they, clip they was They all from. start the same, so you, you can't really tell. Yeah. What do you think? You're two years old? How old is that clip? Um, um, I'd well, say probably a year and a half. The reason we could tell that was because one of our friends was in that. I only met her last year. And yeah, neither of us had braces yet. And neither, so yeah, okay, the braces was a clue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what, what, what drew you to water as a, as a project? So when we first had the idea of starting a project like this, a very good friend of ours had recently gone on a mission trip with Living Water International, which mm -hmm. is an organization that we partner with. And so she came by and she showed us her pictures from the trip and told us, you know, how impactful it was and how big the need was. And then we kind of did some research on our own and learned that girls our age often don't get to go to school because they spend their entire day hauling water. And we really felt like that was not fair. Mm -hmm. um, that we could do something to help, and which that's why we decided to make water our mission. And Catherine, you were telling me off camera that you guys actually went around the globe and had a chance to visit some of the countries and uh, mm -hmm. people you've helped. It was an amazing experience. We took eight months off of school. Um, we sold our cars, my parents quit their jobs, <laughs> and we basically just went around the world and we saw so many people whose lives we had impacted and it was just, it was an incredible experience. So um, if there are young people watching this broadcast right now who are inspired by you, what would your words of encouragement be? I think the biggest thing is to just start something. It can be something as small as something in your neighborhood. Don't feel any pressure to turn it into a huge project um, because that takes time and patience. We've been doing this for eight years now. Wow. Um, and it started out as a little project in our local Starbucks. Um, so I think, you know, that's definitely the biggest thing. And also don't let anyone tell you that you can't make a difference. Adults often underestimate kids all the time. Um, but kids actually have a lot of power and a lot of really great ideas. And so um, I think to tell kids just to go ahead and start, and you never know where it'll end up. Do you find that most kids your age are philanthropic? Yes. Actually, we have so many younger volunteers, and it's just amazing how generous kids can be. Um, I've witnessed very young kids who love to volunteer and love to make a difference, and I feel like if you give them a chance to do something, they jump at it, and they're super eager to help people. I think a lot of kids just don't realize that they have the ability to make an impact, and so once they are shown, look, if you do this, you will help change someone's life, they are so willing to help. And you guys have actually volunteered your time this weekend uh, to be part <laughs> of a youth and philanthropy um, virtual event. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so we are going to be a part of this conference with several other people that we know, and we are just going to be teaching kids about how you can get into philanthropy and volunteerism as a young adult, and uh, just to you know teach kids that they can have an impact, and to show them some ways that they can start a small project on their own. Outstanding. Well, we're almost out of time, so we're going to put up a couple of websites. Let's start with the paperforwater.org website. Uh, we'll put that up on the screen. And um, then the organization that um, allows you to get plugged into their virtual conference is philanthropymisunderstood.org. Those are the websites. Ladies, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank, thank you so, you so much, much for having us. You bet. And that's it for now. We'll see you next time.